soil their texture structure consistency soil consistency soil porosity soil density that are bulk density and particle density soil color and soil temperature they all are the basic physical properties or fundamental physical properties of soil <coughs> now what is soil structure texture soil texture is the relative distribution or relative proportion of primary soil particles what are the primary soil particle they are sand silt and clay they are primary soil particle based on their size uh, size they are they have been classified their size is uh, the the relative proportion of the distribution of sand silt and clay in a soil at a given time is called soil texture or texture of that soil for example sand the size of sand is greater than 0.02 mm silt is this and clay is less than 0.002 mm this is a good representation i have also mentioned the, uh, the source of this sand silt clay this is clay silt sand and what we actually see in by our naked eyes is gravel now what uh, st uh, structure so what is soil structure soil structure is basically the arrangement of primary soil particles into secondary soil particles is called soil structure that is the primary soil particles accumulate uh, and uh, flocculate and arrange themselves in a particular shape at a specified time due to the effect of environment and other biological factors and they form a secondary structure their secondary structure are, are like peat clods concretion etc and aggregates they are secondary soil structure they form uh, they are formed from primary soil particle like clay silt and sand as uh, you know the texture is permanent but structure is not permanent because by tillage or any other management practices structure is vulnerable to changes in soil the soil structure are platy prismatic columnar blocky crumbly granular and structureless these are i will explain in detail in later classes these are the shape of the structure this is granular this is blocky this is platy prismatic and columnar all i will discuss in the uh, later on a soil consistency what is soil consistency soil consistency is um, when you uh, work on soil you, you you will see it doesn't get depressed because soil has its own resistance to force that is deformation or rupture or whenever a tractor goes or moves on the soil it does not deform because of this soil consistency what so what is soil consistency it is the resistance of a soil to uh, the deformation force or rupture tip force this deals with the strength and nature of the forces between soil particles the forces may be are two types that is that are they are adhesion forces and cohesion forces adhesion forces uh, for adhesion forces uh, adhesion force is that force which is acting between soil particle and water or any other uh, matter like organic matter but cohesion force is that force which is acting in between the soil particles this is that is the cohesion same similar phase now basically in, uh, in the soil consistency how well does it stick together higher the forces because higher the forces they will stick together uh, in a stronger manner so there will be less higher uh, less, uh, higher resistance to deformation or rupture so the soil will be highly consistent in nature the pore space or porosity is defined as pore space is the volume or amount of space within a soil that is not occupied by particle of mineral or organic matter texture structure compaction all if even if organic matter content and management practices like crop cultivation tillage fertilization organic matter application all affect soil porosity density the specific gravity of a soil particle is 2.6 gram per centimeter square centimeter cube this is also called the particle density of soil and um, the bar uh, soil has two type of density one is absolute density this is particle density and another is bulk density where 
so uh, in particle density only soil density mass of soil mass and volume of soil particles are considered whereas in bulk density both mass and volume of soil air and particles both are considered so uh, bulk density is always less than that of particle density it ranges from 1.2 to 1.8 so for, for, what is bulk density bulk density is mass of total soil solids divided by some total soil uh, including soil solids plus air divided by uh, soil uh, so total soil volume but particle density is mass of soil solids divided by volume of soil solids which i mentioned here this is bulk density now color so, um, you can see some soil are red in color some soil are black in color some soil are gray in color this is um, an indirect measure of other important characteristics like water drainage aeration organic matter content colors are determined by in a soil by using a moon cell color chart can you please mute your mic who is on Hello. Hello. Okay, thank you. Now, this soil temperature is also another one of the most important uh, fundamental soil physical properties. Mm, soil, uh, this soil temperature affects nutrient and water movement. And it also uh, chemical processes are temperature dependent in soil like uh, carbon mineralization, nutrient solubilization, microbial uh, activity like enzyme activity, soil enzyme activity, all are dependent on soil temperature. Now this is the basically differentiation between sand, silt and clay. Sand are basically um, a loose granular material formed by disintegration of rock. And silt are dust like material, and clay is an extremely fine grained material. So, sand are as loose and granular material, they are larger in size, and clay is the finest particle. Sand has no plasticity. I will explain later what is soil plasticity. Plasticity is the adherence to a soil particle. Sand has no plasticity, silt has medium plasticity, and clay has very high plasticity. Now, soil uh, come to um, the main topic that is soil texture. What is soil texture? Soil textures refers to the proportion of sand, silt, and clay sized particles that make up the mineral fraction of the soil. Now, there are um, basically five types of soil texture, which are again divided and subdivided to have 11 types of soil texture basically. So first is sandy soil, that is coarse texture, loamy soil moderately coarse texture, then loamy soil with medium texture, loamy soil with moderately fine texture, and clay soil, that is fine texture. Now, they are textural class, one common name, one general texture may have two to three textural classes in a soil, like sandy soils, and may have sand, textural class may fall to textural class sand or loamy sand, based upon the content on sand, silt, and clay. Uh, look at there that clay percentage is almost fixed in uh, these two classes but sand per different variation in sand percentage is large in sandy soil that is purely sandy soil sand percentage is more than 85 percent whereas in loamy sand soil sand percentage is 70 to 85 percent whereas seed percentage is 0 to 30 percent and clay is 0 to 15 percent and uh, loamy soil for loamy soil it is 50 to 70 percent sand percent is there and uh, clay percentage and silt percentage increase to zero fifth up to 50 percent in that way for clay soil you can see that sand percent sand percentage decrease to less than 50 percent <coughs> or in some cases less than 20 percent and clay percentage increase to more than 40 percent so in that way the textural classes is uh, made this is a textural triangle through which we can determine the sand a texture uh, a texture of a soil that is sand seal and clay percentage of a soil can be if you know the sand seal and clay percentage of a soil you can determine the uh, 
texture class of that particular soil if using this triangle. Uh, soil texture determination is based basically two methods are there. First is fill method and second one is slab method. For fill method, you have to moist the soil in a uh, up to a optimum level. Then you have to uh, fill the soil, the coarseness of the soil, the cohesion or the stickiness or plasticity. What are the coarseness means the grittiness, how uh, rough they are and what is cohesion? Cohesion is uh, does they forming a ball or not. Adhesion means um, whether they are uh, sticking to your hands or they are not sticking to your hands. Based on um, this, you will uh, you can understand what, what uh, sand, sandy soil because sandy soil, uh, clay soil or loam soil. <coughs> but this is a very crude method. We generally do not in practice. It is not accepted in general. Someone has texted me that is translated in Marathi. Sorry for that. I don't know Marathi language. Uh, sorry for that. So, don't please don't uh, uh, do like that message. Sir, I am speaking English and Hindi. You uh, you understood in Hindi and English. Okay, sir. You continue, sir. Okay, thank you. Now uh, coming to the lab method, there are two methods for lab. First one is uh, pipette method, international pipette method, and second one is hydrometer method. That is a hydrometer use. In pipette method, uh, uh, for more accurate, pipette method is more accurate analysis for uh, soil texture determination. Here, particle size distribution is based on pipette method was uh, developed by, you can uh, note down here, it is not mentioned in the slide. Uh, it was uh, developed by Dr. G. W. Robinson. It is often asked in multiple choice question and um, uh, hydro. Hydrometer method was developed by Bowkas hydrometer method, Dr. G. Bowkas. Based on their name, it has been. Uh, for um, pipette method, the particle size, which are smaller than 63 micrometer, are uh, obtained for analysis in international pipette method. And the, uh, in international pipette method, the size analysis is done based on the sedimentation principle. You can note down these things. Um, they are not mentioned here. The silt and clay, uh, uh, the sand is a coarser particle and heavy particle, so sand will settle down faster, whereas silt and clay are uh, lighter particle or they, are, they have less weight, so they will settle at a lower speed. So uh, at a given time, the amount of sand um, will uh, sediment or settle in a beaker at a faster rate than silt and clay. Based on that principle, we can determine the amount of sand and amount of silt and clay. In that way, we can determine the uh, soil texture. And for hydrometer method, what is done? A um, soil is dispersed in water and sodium hexametaphosphate solution. And the density of that dispersion medium is taken after at a specified time that is 40 seconds and 2 hours and in the, on that basis we can uh, determine the uh, uh, density of the soil solution and based on that we can determine uh, using a uh, formula we can determine hydrometer uh, the soil texture for hydrometer method it is mm -hmm, the soil soil particle less than 0 0.0475 millimeter i have uh, give better result. Uh, so, silt and clay particles cannot be determined directly in this method. Only clay particle can be determined directly by this method. So, um, but silt and uh, uh, clay uh, is determined from the, by deducting total soil mass minus clay mass. And uh, another uh, caution about using hydrometer method is it has to be calibrated at 20 degrees centigrade and uh, may be used over a range of 15 to 25 degrees centigrade. Now, 
now what is to, now coming to stokes law uh, stokes law is um, uh, uh, states that the terminal velocity of a spherical particle settling under the influence of gravity in a fluid of a given density and viscosity is proportional to the square of the radius that is terminal velocity v is proportional um, falling under the influence of a gravity that is freely falling under the force of gravity is um, proportional uh, to the uh, density of a uh, particle and inversely proportional to the viscosity of the uh, medium and uh, directly proportional to the r square that is uh, radius of the particle in that uh, this stoke this stoke law is used in sedimentation principle or international pipette method now there are some assumption of stokes law like um, particles must be spherical smooth and rigid whereas uh, part, second assumption is particle must be of uniform density and particle must be sufficiently large and uh, they should not be affected by thermal movement or brownian motion or and the particles should not interfere with another and should settle in, independently and that the suspension must be um, still without any turbulence these are the five assumption which should be uh, followed in stokes law but uh, application of stokes law in soil has its own limitation they are that see first what the first assumption is taking taking telling particle must be spherical smooth and rigid but soil clay particles are not uh, spherical they are platy in nature so this is the first deviation of application of stokes law in soil and soil particles are not of all same density uh, stokes law assume that particle must be of uniform density but soil particles are not of all have same density their density ranges from 2.6 to 2.7 and mean organic matter has a very low density of, of 0.2 and some minerals has density as high as 5 gram per centimeter cube it is also telling that particles must be sufficiently large so that brownian motion does not take place but clay particles and finer clay particles have diameter less than 0.002 mm Uh, so the particles uh, so of course the clay particles exhibit this brownian movement and many uh, again what the stokes law is telling the particle should not interfere with one another and settle independently that is it should freely fall it should not interact with one another but falling particles drag down each other and due to the uh, clay particles are negatively charged and the soil is uh, soil has uh, that negative charge causes coulombic repulsion among them among the soil particle causing the soil particles to deviate from their fall and particles um, the suspension must be still without uh, any turbulence but soil particles of point greater than 0.8 mm diameter settle quickly and causes heavy turbulence now in that way we can determine the uh, we can use stokes law now coming to some more details on sand uh, what are the uh, sand silt properties of sand silt basic properties of sand silt clay <coughs> for uh, sa sandy soil for sand you can note down this these things i have not mentioned in my ppt the sand soil have low specific surface area that is 0 0.001 where 1 0.0011 meter square gram per gram for coarse sand and 0.1 meter square per gram so they have very relatively very low chemical activity for which they are resistant to weathering as well as they have no cation exchange capacity and their nutrient supplying capacity is also low and uh, for uh, silt particles, the specific surface area ranges from 1.1 mm square per gram 
to one to one to eleven meters square per gram as their uh, specific surface area increased their chemical activity also increases as compared to the sand particle and the clay particle which have less than 0 0.02 millimeter that's 0 0.002 millimeter in diameter they are platy in shape or spherical in shape they are highly sticky and highly plastic in nature and they are determined basically by sedimentation method and the, it is often asked in a uh, multiple choice question the specific surface area of clay particle is as high as 11 to 1100 meter square per gram and a grain of fine colloidal clay has about 10,000 times as much as specific surface as that of sand. As they have high specific surface area, they are um, highly active in nature and clay particles are composed of simple aluminum silicates with varying quantities of iron aluminium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and ammonium. In that way, uh, sand, the properties of sand and silt clay particles differentiated. <laughs> and uh, coming to the texture of the soil, there are some typical characteristics of uh, sandy soil, loamy soil, and clay soil. You can note down this uh, text. Uh, typical characteristics for sandy soil the soil should have at least 70 percent sand separates you can see here at least minimum 70 percent sand separates and 15 percent or less clay particles should be there and for loamy soil there may be and they may a loamy soil is often mistaken or misunderstood that it has equal proportion of sand, silt and clay. It is not true. The loamy soil does not have equal proportion of sand, silt and clay, but they have, they, the loamy soil uh, exhibit their properties in such a way that the properties of sand, the properties of silt and the properties of clay are present in equal, in same proportion. That's why they are called as loamy soil or moderate, uh, moderately coarse texture soil in uh, soil size and ideal for an ideal loamy soil uh, it is cohesive and it has a good drainage and medium water retention capacity medium plant available water content low plasticity low stickiness and medium cation exchange capacity and the loamy soil is the ideal soil for uh, crop production and agricultural use and clay soil, for clay soil, at least 35% uh, clay separate should be there present. And uh, in most cases, not less than 40%. Like here, the clay soil, you can understand from here that at least minimum, must contain minimum of 35% and in most cases, not less than 40% clay separate should, clay particles should be there. They, as the clay soil has very high percentage of clay particles, they are very highly sticky and highly plastic. And the porosity of um, coming porosity of soils is that clay soil has very high porosity, whereas um, sandy soil has very high macro porosity, and loamy soil has um, equal distribution of macro and micro porosity. In clay soil, if tillage operation is not done at proper water content, uh, the, it forms clod during tillage and these clods are very hard and it is difficult to break by um, laddering or plowing. <clears throat> and for silty soil, you can see here silt soil, there should be at least 80% of silt, minimum of 80% of silt and 12% or less than that of clay particle. These three uh, data you should remember for your uh, exams mm -hmm. for sand, silt, clay, and loam particle soil. And these are often asked in um, multiple choice question. So um, this is a this is also called medium texture soil. This soil uh, has uh, 
some plasticity, but they does not ex exhibit much of cation exchange capacity. The surface of the soil are normally mm, compact and crusty. Silt, you can note down one more thing, the silty soil is most prone for soil crust formation. We will understand it in better way in crust, soil crusting class. Now, based on the soil physical properties and soil texture, uh, there are some problems of so soil physical problems or soil. Like, now you understand that uh, there are soil problems. You what are the soil problems? You understand that low fertility is a problem. Low organic matter content is a problem. These are all chemical soil problems, but uh, there are some physical problems also there based on the uh, distribution and amount of sand, silt, clay particle in a soil. Like uh, if a soil is uh, have too much of sand, that is uh, coarse texture soil or light soil, the soil are uh, soil have very low water holding capacity low nutrient retention capacity, low cation exchange capacity. So they are unfit for cultivation. For reclamation of this type of soil, sandy soil, uh, we should, uh, or for making it suitable for agricultural crop, we should apply organic matter so that it enhances the uh, nutrient holding capacity, water holding capacity, as well as nutrient retention capacity. And uh, it supply sufficient amount of organic matter to plant and microbes. For fine textured soil, that is mm, clay soil, the problem is that you cannot plow it easily or you cannot tillage, uh, do your tillage operation easily because it sticks to your tractor, your plow, your disc operator, it uh, stick. So there is a problem in uh, too much of clay soil also that's why to in the middle portion that is loamy soil which has equal proportion equal which exhibit equal properties of sand silt and clay is the best soil or suited for uh, agricultural operation now as you know fine textured soil uh, they are uh, composed of clay particles but you need heavy forces during plowing or during tillage operation in uh, clay, too much of clay soil. That's why they are called heavy soil, not based on their uh, weight. It is based on the force required to plow or force required to detach soil particles. So clay particles, clay soils are called heavy soil. Uh, and uh, sandy soil are called light soils for uh, as sandy uh, sand or so, sandy soil contains too much of sand it it is it has less force uh, or less adhesion less plasticity so less amount of force is required to detach or to tillage in that way they have been defined as uh, sandy soil have been defined as light soil and uh, clay soil have been defined as as heavy soil not based on their um, particle weight Anything to ask? Uh, sir, I want to ask about the uh, soil textural triangle. Uh, can you explain it uh, some briefly? See, in soil textural, tri in soil textural triangle, <coughs> it is uh, uh, it has sand, silt, and clay. Okay, in and these are the percentage of sand silt and clay mentioned here in the bottom and silt is in this uh, side of the triangle and this uh, clay is in this side of the triangle this is equilateral triangle okay uh, when you get a parts proportion of sand silt and clay in a particular uh, soil you can draw the amount of sand silt and clay for example 30% sand here, I have given 30% sand is this, okay. You can calculate this 30% sand. It will draw a parallel line 
to shield that is this line okay 30 to 70 you can see my cursor moving hello yes sir yes sir we can see okay uh, so you will draw a parallel line uh, first you have to locate 30 here in sand and then you have to go anti clockwise which side is anti clockwise that is sealed line is anti clockwise and you have to draw a par parallel line from 30 parallel uh, to sealed that is 30 to 70 here okay then you have to determine the clay percentage you can see where is clay clay is in this direction it is moving okay so clay is 50 percent you can see here okay and anti-clockwise is sand sand line okay so you have to draw a line from 50 parallel to sand that is this line okay and you have now we have to look at 20 percent sealed where is 20 percent sealed this line is 20 percent sealed okay this point what is anti-clockwise anti -clockwise, you rotate like this and it is clay so you have to uh, draw a parallel line from uh, this point parallel to clay that is 280 the intersection point will be defined as clay in the in that case it will fall here somewhere here so it will be clay clay takes care of soil okay okay sir thank you Sir, sir, please repeat these things once time on. Okay, thank you. I will repeat again. First, you have please to repeat this that. Uh, in Hindi, I can explain. That will be more understandable, I think. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Hindi, sir. Okay. No problem. Uh, first, 30 per soil hydrometer method or international pipette method say, uh, sand, silt, or clay content determine karna hoga. Okay, now you have to make a sand, silt, or clay, clay ka percentage. Hai. Ab to make a canna hai. Ab pele sand ka kitna percentage hai. Ode kna hai. Sand ka jitna percentage is triangle. Ye triangle uh, defined hai by USDA. So, Ye triangle change nahi hota kahi bhi. Ye universal truth hai. So to make pele 30% sand locate kana prega hai hai. ठीक है अब सैंड लाइन के एंटी क्लॉकवाइज देखना पड़ेगा एंटी क्लॉकवाइज में सिल्ट लाइन सिल्ट लाइन के पैरेलल सिल्ट लाइन के पैरेलल में एक लाइन ड्रॉ करना है 30 टू जो क्ले में इंटरसेक्ट करेगा जो क्ले लाइन पे इंटरसेक्ट करेगा ठीक है तो ये 30 टू 70 पे जाके ये पैरेलल होगा सिल्ट का ओके इसके बाद सी क्ले का 50% क्ले सोयल में 50% क्ले अब क्ले लाइन में 50% लोकेट करना है पहले ये है हमारा 50% इसके एंटी क्लॉकवाइज जाना पड़ेगा एंटी क्लॉकवाइज जाने के बाद ये सैंड लाइन पे आता है तो सैंड का सैंड लाइन के पैरेलल में 50 से एक पैरेलल लाइन ड्रॉ करना पड़ेगा जो सिल्ट लाइन में जाके टच करेगा तो ये सिल्ट लाइन में जाके यहां से टच करेगा 50 टू 50 में ठीक है अब क्या है अब 20 अब तुम्हारे पास सोयल में 20% सिल्ट है तो सिल्ट में 20% लोकेट करना पड़ेगा सिल्ट में यहां 20% है सिमिलरली सिल्ट के पैरेलल सॉरी एंटी क्लॉकवाइज जाना पड़ेगा तो क्ले क्ले पार्टिकल क्ले लाइन आता है अब क्ले के पैरेलल में एक 20 से एक पैरेलल लाइन ड्रॉ करना पड़ेगा जो सैंड को टच करेगा तो ये जो तीनों पार्टिकल तीनों जो लाइन है वो इस पॉइंट पे छेद कर रहा है एक जगह पे तीन एक ही जगह पे यहां पे मिल रहा है तो ये जो अब ये जो इसमें लिखा हुआ है ये जो डार्क कलर स्टिक्स लाइन है ये टेक्सचरल सेपरेशन है अब ये सब दिया हुआ रहेगा इस टेक्स ये सब जो ट्रायंगल है ये सब पहले से दिया हुआ रहता है तो अब जिस पॉइंट पे ये तीनों लाइन एक साथ पास करेगा तो उसमें लिखा होगा जैसे इसमें लिखा है क्ले तो ये क्ले के अंदर पड़ेगा अगर ये यहां इंटरसेक्ट करता तो ये क्ले लोम होता अगर ये ये तीनों लाइन यहां पे इंटरसेक्ट करता तो ये 
लोम सॉइल होता है ऐसे ये जो टेक्सचर क्लास है ये दिया हुआ रहता है ऑलरेडी पहले से डिफाइंड है उसके बेसिस पे हम लोग डिफाइन करते हैं कौन सा सॉइल कौन सी टेक्सचर में आएगा ओके अंडरस्टूड सर इसका मतलब ये है कि अगर हमें परसेंटेज दिया है कि इतना परसेंट सैंड है इतना परसेंट क्ले है और इतना परसेंट सिल्ट है तो टेक्सचरल ट्रैंगल के माध्यम से ये जो जैसे अभी आपने एक्सप्लेन किया उस माध्यम से हम ऐसा डिटरमाइन कर सकते हैं कि ये कौन से टाइप का है राइट ओके ओके सर नाउ इट इज क्लियर टू मी थैंक यू सर एनी अदर पर्सन any other queries is there what type of question ask regarding to this composition of sand silter clay in the different types i mentioned na in during teaching that is what are the oftenly asked question like sand uh, in sandy soil how much of sand should be there so that we can tell it sand like i mentioned at least 70% and in clay soil it is that uh, it should be at least 35% yes, and in most cases not less than 40% uh, in that way the specific surface area uh, uh, i also told to note down um, those things i have uh, told in during my lecture i think which are important for your exam purpose sir one more question is there uh, yes. also in chat box uh, somebody asked this question uh, can you uh, differentiate between the plasticity and consistency yes yes of course why not <clears throat> see uh, plasticity and consistency these are two things that is completely related to soil water content okay and the forces that is adhesion force and cohesion force of uh, acting between the soil water and soil particles i mentioned earlier that adhesion force is that force which is acting between soil particle and soil water whereas cohesion force is that force which is acting within soil particle only Co uh, you can uh, Co uh, understand that cohesion. That is cohesion. Co that is same. Co means same in uh, English. So cohesion is the force attracting between same phase. That is same same similar uh, uh, phases. That is soil particles. That is solid phase. And adhesion is different. That is uh, different phase. That is solid phase and liquid phase. Soil water and soil particles. They are different phase. One is liquid phase and another is solid phase. So that is adhesion. and uh, to to better understand what is uh, consistency and plasticity co uh, consistency is um, the uh, uh, simply the stickiness that is uh, consistency is simply the uh, pressure that soil exert against a force applied on it that i explained that when a tractor runs on a soil it does not uh, depress some somewhere it is depressed but it again comes up that is called soil consistency that is the uh, resistance of a soil against any deformity pressure okay and soil plasticity is uh, the uh, capacity of soil a wet soil to form a ribbon like structure when you rub a soil ball in a in your hand palm uh, and roll it if it forms a ribbon then the soil has optimum plasticity okay if the soil cannot form ribbon that means the soil is incapable of plasticity anything else no sir sir move on sir okay thank you now uh, the, what are the significance of soil texture the uh, soil texture is the most important property of a soil 
before uh, we start using that soil for starting cultivation, starting uh, your building purpose or any other purpose, we must know the distribution of sand, silt clay for, for agriculture use as well as for engineering use. For both cases, soil texture is the most important property before starting our business, any type of business. Because texture determines the suitability of land to raise different crops in season and it is also, it also determine the total pore space and the distribution of macro and micro pore space in soil based on the distribution of sand, silt and clay in the soil and amount of water and air present in the soil also determine the soil texture. And soil texture also govern nutrient holding capacity and nutrient supplying capacity and water holding capacity also. It, it also helps in determining soil amendment like for the clay soil you need large amount of amendment because it has very high holding capacity. So its chemical activity is increased. So to get same amount of result, you need more amount of amendment like lime. For an acid, acidic clay, uh, clay, lime, clay acidic soil, you need more amount of lime to apply than clay, sandy acidic soil. And texture has pronounced effect on soil temperature also. And this soil temperature is important because of uh, for its role in seed germination as well as root growth. So <clears throat> this is all I have to tell about in soil class. Now I will stop this screen and share another PPT on soil structure. Students, do you have any question regarding to soil texture? And if you can please ask to the sir in the chat box. I think my screen is visible. Soil structure, concept, classification, soil aggregation, genesis factors, its stability, and evaluation of soil structure. Okay. Yes. Now, as I told earlier, soil structure is the arrangement of primary and secondary per soil particles in soil ma uh, mass is known as soil structure. That is the, you understood about sand, silt and clay. Now there are, uh, first I will define the uh, secondary soil particles. They are uh, paid, clod, aggregate and concretion. These uh, four, four type of uh, soil structure is there in secondary soil st structure is there what are paid clod aggregates and concretion they uh, basically they all are formed from uh, the primary soil particles due to some management practices or tillage or chemical reaction or natural processes so what is paid you can write down Paid is individual natural soil aggregate. They are naturally formed and individual soil aggregate. What is clod? When uh, clod is artificially formed soil mass uh, broken into any shape by plowing or tillage operation. Art that is, uh, they are artificial. That's why, uh, like for example, tillage. When you um, till a soil uh, in a, a moist soil, different uh, masses of soils are formed. They are called uh, clod. And fragment, fragment is uh, natural. Uh, the soil bed may break down naturally due to temperature, water action, and uh, other okay, other reaction, other natural agents like rain raindrop. And that way, they also form some soil masses. They are called fragment. So. The basic difference between clod and fragment is that clod is artificially formed and fragment is naturally formed. And uh, next is concretion. Concretion is the coherent mass of soil particles formed by chemical reaction such as um, calcium carbonate. So, uh, it may be artificial or 
natural calcium because calcium carbonate can form naturally or artificially you can apply it externally so the it doesn't depend on application the reaction is important for concretion Now, uh, so, uh, the soil structure is the arrangement and organization of this primary and secondary soil particle in a definite shape and uh, in a definite shape at a particular time is called uh, soil structure. Soil structure are uh, defined based uh, in three categories that is type, class, and grade. Type or type determines type is shape of the shape and form and arrangement pattern of individual pets or and class is size of the pets and grade are degree of distinctiveness of the pets i will explain in, later on all these sir, things hello sir hello hello sir yes ah. sir please sir screen ko sir full screen mode mein sir kar do na sir please yes it is now i think sorry full screen sir. mode mein sorry for that yes, sir. now no, no, sir, no. No. Now, uh, coming to the types of structure, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, types mean shape and arrangement pattern of the soil pits. So, come to the uh, first type, that is plate-like structure. You can see, you can, in uh, rocky structure, you can see this type of structure, soil structure. In these aggregates, are, they are arranged in relatively thin horizontal plates. You can see the horizontal line is more expanded than the vertical line. So this is the typical characteristics of platy structure. When the units and layers are thick, they are called platy. And if they are thin, very thin, they are called laminar st structure. So they are so plate plate-like structure has two subtypes. One is platy, and that is laminar. Platy is thick and uh, laminar is thin. And the platy structure is most noticeable in surface layer of virgin soils, but that means they are not cultivated soil. And uh, but may they are, may also be present in subsoil. That means it is often asked in GRA PSRF question. Undisturbed soil type has which type of soil structure? They are plate-like soil structure. Okay, this type is in, uh, inherited from the parent material. It's in, especially by the action of water or ice. Basically, they are and due to act of you know, water, role of water in weathering, due to when water reacts with rock metal, due to its abrasive forces, the upper parts of the rocks disintegrate and they form plate-like structure. Now come to prism like prism like structure are where vertical axis are more developed than sorry I have put a wrong picture here I will uh, supply you the correct picture the vertical axis is more developed than horizontal axis giving a pillar like shape you can imagine a pillar or uh, uh, which you can you often see in your home or uh, anywhere in railway station this is a pillar like where vertical axis is more developed than a horizontal axis and it's it, uh, in length it's vary from 1 to 10 centimeter and it's commonly occur in subsoil horizons of arid and semi-arid region this is very important just uh, it has been asked many times in grf uh, subsoil of arid and semi-arid region Sound is there, I think. Buzzing sound is there. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. I muted him, sir. Sir, okay. you continue, sir. Okay, okay. 
for prism like structure when the tops are rounded the structure is called columnar when the structure uh, tops are flat or plain and level and clear cut they are called prismatic structure so again prism like structure has two sub type they are columnar and prismatic for columnar their tops are rounded and for prismatic tops are flat and coming to the block like structure here all three dimension are of equal size you can see here all three dimension have equal size so they form a soil block in irregularly they are six faced and with their three dimension are more or less equal when the faces are flat and distinct they are called angular blocky and when the uh, faces are, and edges are rounded they are called sub angular blocky these types of uh, structure usually formed in the subsoil uh, uh, and uh, they have they are basically related with the soil water holding capacity in aeration and root penetration and spheroidal soil structure they are rounded they are, and uh, all rounded aggregates are called uh, spheroidal soil structure they are size is very less not exceeding more than 1 inch this Round, these round rate complex usually are, are usually loosely arranged and readily separated the, when they are weighted they are um, intervening faces are closed so readily that they swell and when they are uh, dried they shrink together so that is called swelling and shrinking of the soil each uh, primary structure type is different and uh, sorry five these are not important <coughs> one thing to mention that when the granules are very porous they are termed as crumb so after plowing <coughs> a soil you can get a porous a crumbly soil now what are the sizes of the class the term uh, now come to the type class and grade i mentioned three categories type class grade these all were type of soil structure now come to the class of soil structure they are based on the, uh, they are uh, very thin very fine very fine or very thin fine or thin medium or uh, coarse medium coarse thick or very coarse or thick these are, these are based on the size of the individual beds they have been defined as type class and now grade come to the grade of the soil structure they are individual distinct neatness of a in beds that means how easily you can differentiate between two beds present in a soil structure in, in this type there are many number of soil individual beds forming a type and <clears throat> the capacity to distinguish like for example here you can see you can easily distinguish between two soil beds one two three four soil beds so based on that we can uh, we define that grade of soil structure that is uh, they are structureless there is no noticeable aggregation is there so you cannot identify you can in individual all grade you can all uh, soil individual soil particles you can identify weak structure that is poorly formed indistinct formation of beds which are not durable and much an unaggregated material moderately structured soil moderately well developed beds with fairly durable and distinct and strong structure very well developed which are quite durable and distinct in nature now how you define a soil structure that is how you will define this is your soil structure or tell your soil structure for naming a soil structure the sequence is followed that grade class and type that is reverse we we understood the soil structure from type class grade but when you tell it we will tell first grade of soil structure then class of soil structure then type of soil structure it is generally asked in um, a multiple type of question Uh, what is the sequence that is first we have to tell grade of the soil 
then class, then type. For example, strong coarse angular, strong coarse, that is strong coarse angular blocky. Strong coarse angular blocky structure is the mm, naming and moderate thin platy, weak fine prismatic. These are the example of uh, telling a soil structure. Now, what are the factors that affect soil structure? First one is climate. Climate, climate has considerable influence on the degree of aggregation uh, as well as on the type of structure. In arid region, basically where water is, water is very low and temperature is very high, thus there is very little aggregation of primary particles. In semi-arid regions, the aggregation is higher and in humid and temperate climate, soil aggregate formation is the highest. Organic matter content. Organic matter content of um, organic matter acts as a binding agent for soil particle. So higher the organic matter content, higher will be the soil aggregation or better will be the structural stability of a soil. And tillage, um, frequent tillage um, disrupt soil structure by breaking soil aggregates as well as soil uh, particle uh, by breaking soil secondary part, no, particles that is paid, clot and aggregate, they uh, break. And in that way, they uh, disrupt soil structure and destabilize the soil structure. Plant roots and plant roots and plant residues. Plant basically excretes some gelatinous organic compound like mucilage, carbohydrate, protein, um, glomali. All these uh, particles, all these gelatinous organic compound act as a binding agent for soil particles and enhance the uh, structure of enhance uh, the stability of soil structure whereas if we uh, cause dehydration of soil rapid dehydration of soils it creates uh, the soil pores will sink and it will create uneven pressure on soil particles this will result in soil crack. Mm, that's why in Bharti soil during drying, cracking crack formation is there. Now animals, animals like soil, animals like uh, soil fauna, earthworms, moles, insects that burrow in the soil and the cheap agents that, mm, that are the primary agents that take part in aggregation of soil finer particles by disintegrating, they all act by disintegrating soil organic matter and uh, <coughs> decomposing soil organic matter. And as the soil organic matter decomposes, it releases gelatinous substances, so soil structure stability is increased. Similarly, microbes also help in mm, soil structure formation by mm, releasing organic acid, gelatinous particle, and by their uh, mice, high fi fungi, uh, fungi and actinomycetes, by, except mechanical binding by their mycelia and hyphae, which are mm, which bind soil particles and stabilize soil structure. Fertilizers application, like mm, sodium fertilizer application, uh, destroyed destroy so stability of soil aggregate, whereas calcium fertilizer application and ammonium fertilizer application um, enhances stability of soil structure. <coughs> wetting and drying, rapid wetting and drying causes disruption on of soil structure. Clay content and water content, clay and water content also in clay, uh, in, enhances the soil structural stability. Now, aggregate formation coming to the aggregate formation mechanism. So, what are soil aggregates? Soil aggregates are the naturally occurring cluster of primary particles, primary soil particles uh, stabilized by organic matter, iron, aluminum oxides, or other binding agents where binding force within uh, where binding force is greater than the surrounding soil particle. What I mean that these are freely free soil particles and these are aggregated soil particles. The force uh, be, uh, acting between the soil particles here is greater than here. 
that is and they are stabilized by binding agents such as iron and aluminum oxides calcium carbonate organic matter and phosphate phosphate despite being an anion also act as a binding agent due to its capacity for ligand exchange <coughs> now uh, there are three mechanism of soil aggregate formation first one is coagulation i rather i should say three steps of um, soil aggregate formation coagulation or flocculation cementation and aggregate mass formation for um, coagulation and flocculation flocculating agents are there flocculating agents like for cation cal calcium iron aluminum magnesium etc and for um, anion phosphate is a um, act as a coagulating anion this is often asked in grf srf multiple choice question the co coagulation then, then cementation what is cementation cementation the coagulated particle need to adhere on one on another by binding agents such as organic matter iron aluminum oxides and calcium carbonate content <coughs> So aggregation is uh, then another uh, step is that aggregate mass formation after aggregate after the cementation takes place the soil water has a great role in forming aggregate mass that is large soil masses to form stable soil aggregate it is often told that aggregation is flocculation plus and that plus is cementation this is called this equation is this question is often asked in soil science exams now what are the binding agent in soil organic and inorganic organic is roots fungal hyphae microbial by products that are glucomucilage organic acid carbohydrates and transient is polysaccharide microbial by products persistent Binding agents are humic substances, organometallic complex, and uh, humic sesquioxide. You know, among the inorganic binding agent, polyvalent proteins, sesquioxide, aluminous silicates, and dehydrated silicates are there <coughs> in the soil formation. Bind. Now, from here you can understand better the mechanism of aggregate formation. First, you have individual soil particle. That is this clay. This is a clay particle. and here you have cation that is calcium as a binding agent sorry flocculating agent it will uh, form a metal bridging between two clay particle or two negatively charged uh, soil constituents like clay or organic matter to form um, a Uh, to coagulate this will act as a, uh, the calcium iron manganese aluminum act as a iron bridge or metal bridge to coagulate the negatively charged soil clay or negatively charged soil constituents in that way soil clay particles are coagulated or flocculated now after flocculation what was the step that is cementation now this clay particle has to be Uh, stacked together one upon each other this is done by the action of organic matter and calcium carbonate and iron aluminum oxide that is sesquic oxides in that way see there is plate like structure has been formed and then this uh, cemented soil structure many number of these cemented particles are situated around here like this they have to come together to form a stable ag aggregate this is taken place this takes place by the action of water force and mm, the biological forces that is root hyphae and organic matter in that way they form micro aggregate this micro aggregate are again coagulate again uh, uh, interfered by this plant root you can see here plant root microbial hyphae organic matter and they from this large amount um, high mass soil aggregate this is called macro aggregate this dimension you need to note down um, for your exam 
that is what nano aggregate has diameter 2 micrometer to 1 nanometer micro aggregate has di diameter of 250 micrometer to 2 micrometer and mi macro aggregate has greater than 250 to 2000 micrometer diameter now factors affecting soil aggregation so what are the factors that will affect soil aggregation first is electrolyte concentration that is electrical conductivity of a soil electrical conductivity lower the elect electrical conduct that is higher the concentration of iron aluminum and calcium it that is higher will be the ec in soil so it will increase the stability of clay 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 particle because higher amount of cation will ensure higher stability of soil clay particles <coughs> the electrolyte composition it is concentration it is composition if mm, compo composition with different types of ions that is if sodium is present here it will disperse soil particles because sodium has smaller charge and calcium has higher charge calcium aluminum magnesium has higher charge so mm, in practical situation a calcium ion is not present as such it is surrounded by water molecules around it as i have mentioned here so for calcium it has two plus charge so it will attract its the negatively charged oxygen molecules more towards its nucleus and sodium has only single charge so it will uh, not attract the oxygen ions of water oxygen molecule of water so nearer as calcium can so the distance between this oxygen and calcium and this oxygen and calcium is short shorter than sodium so sodium forms a bigger water molecule hull than calcium in that way the uh, sodium molecule the effect the diameter of sodium molecule increases the hull diameter of sodium molecule increases than calcium and it causes repulsion and it uh, disperse the soil particles that's why if sodium concentration increases it has a negative effect on clay stability and microaggregate stability clay content uh, clay higher the clay content higher is the stability of microaggregate and microaggregate similarly calcium carbonate cal as calcium in calcium carbonate, calcium is present so it will increase clay stability and microaggregate stability organic matter content obviously will increase macroaggregate stability iron aluminum oxide again act as a cementing agent so iron aluminum um, ions act as a coagulating agent but iron aluminum oxides act as a cementing agent this difference you should remember they increase the stability of microaggregate and similarly climate different climatic parameters has a positive and negative effect time as time passes if you keep the soil it will its stability will of course increase <coughs> and biological factors among root mass as the root mass increases the amount of excretion and biological activity will also increase so it, root will ex exert and uh, soil bind more root will bind more amount of soil particles so they will also enhance soil uh, structural stability and soil aggregate macro aggregate stability biology and soil microbes similarly and soil fauna now most important parameter is agricultural management like tillage tillage reduces my macro aggregate but it has nothing to do with micro aggregate and clay it is often critically asked tillage reduces which tillage decreases soil structure stability by reducing macro aggregate micro aggregate or both it is only macro aggregate crop residue the crop residue addition enhances micro macro aggregate stability cover crops also enhances so manure comp and compost application also enhances macro aggregate stability sludge application also enhances macro aggregate stability whereas uh, pasture crop and forage add large amount of organic matter in soil in that way they enhances aggregate, uh, macro aggregate stability arable crops in monoculture like monoculture always decreases the stability of soil because of regular cultivation in the soil the fallow always reduces the stability if because in fallow soil there is no organic matter addition 
or any type of crop cultivation. So organic matter content reduces gradually and the stability of macro aggregate decreases. The phosphogypsum amendment increases the stability of clay particles and macro aggregate. And synthetic conditioner like um, polyphenyl uh, alcohol increases the stability of macro aggregates. Now, how we evaluate soil structure? There are uh, basically two methods of evaluation of soil structure. They are direct method and indirect method. Coming to the direct method, they are my, uh, microscopic method and macroscopic method. For microscopic method, what is done? A um, slide is prepared for soil clay particles. Uh, as you prepare slide in your pathology classes, similar way, we can prepare soil solution, soil suspension slide also. And um, in, under microscope, uh, we see the nature, shape, and size of secondary particles that are clay and voids. <coughs> these, uh, these photographs are taken and uh, their uh, structure is determined. Higher the point, lower the stability of soil structure. Macroscopic method is or field method. Mm -hmm. What is done here? A chunk of soil is taken, that is a mass of soil is ex uh, taken by excavating uh, through a spade or a khurpi, anything. And then it is allowed to fall gently on a wooden platform from a height of three feet. So it will, the soil mass will break into small species and the size and shapes of the uh, broken species are studied uh, based on that soil structure is determined. But in practical, in practice, we do not follow this direct method. We always follow indirect method. That is aggregate sieve analysis. What is done here? Uh, four sieves are taken up uh, based on Mm, your soil. They are. This is a. This is a wet strip seeker. They have a series of uh, seeds are there of different diameter, different opening. So, uh, so that different soil particle, the different sizes of soil particle will retain on a particular seed. They can be shaken in dry condition or in wet, wet condition. Based on that, they are called wet sieving and dry sieving technique. Another method is electrification method. What is done here? A soil mass, a, soil, a loose bound soil is kept in a chamber and it is connected with you know, water is passed from this uh, place. And as you apply water or keep um, pour water in this place, due to um, pressure, it will come here. What and uh, this type of flask, glass flask is um, kept in a series. You can see that the height of the flask is decreasing gradually and the size of the glass is decreasing gradually. So what will happen? The sand particles, which are heavy, which are uh, more weighty in nature, which are more weight, they will settle here. Then silt will settle here. Then uh, clay will settle here and fine clay amount will settle here and it will and the remaining water will pass from here. Remaining base thereafter, this clay particle, this the particle mass is taken uh, weight, or weighted in a weighing machine, and based on that, the soil structure is determined. This is called washing out um, principle. Another is sedimentation principle. Uh, this method is based upon the settling velocity, that is Stokes law. Again. And it is um, in Stokes law, soil, uh, what is done in the basic difference using Stokes law in soil structure and texture determination is during texture determination, we disperse the soil particles completely by this um, removing the cementing agent, such as uh, organic matter, calcium carbonate and iron aluminum oxide. But during texture determination, we do not follow these steps. We directly take soil and allow it to sediment. Uh, and uh, based on sedimentation velocity, we determine the structural stability. Now, how we um, express our result for um, water stable aggregate. These are often asked in GRF SRF question. Water stable aggregate, we take weight of aggregates 
and minus weight of sand and weight of sample minus weight of sand and express in percentage. More frequent method is expressing mean weight diameter and mm, what is mean weight diameter? Uh, you can see mean weight diameter summation of xi into wi. What is xi? Xi is the mean diameter of each size fraction. As I mentioned here, that there are main, uh, four number of sieves based on the uh, size, uh, based on their openings. Basically, we take uh, sieves of this size, 2 micrometer, 250 micrometer, and 2000 micrometer. Uh, at the top, 2000 to 2 micrometer sieve is there, then 250 micrometer, then 2 micrometer sieve is there. So, so it will the first sip will return the macro aggregate, the second sip will return the micro aggregate, the third sip will return the nano aggregate, and the fourth sip will return only the silt and clay particles, the primary particles. X i is the diameter of that, uh, those diameter, and W i is the amount proportion of the total sample weight that retained on the sip and n is the number of size fraction. So by using this formula, we use m mean weight diameter. And uh, similarly, we can express it in log value to express geometric mean diameter. Now, we can, uh, the more frequent, frequently asked uh, are ratios are this clay dispersion ratio, clay dis dispersion index, clay flocculation index. These are, often confusing but uh, that's why they are asked in GRA Pesaga. Uh, <clears throat> now uh, what is done in clay dispersion index? We, dis we take a soil mass, it is dispersed first in water and then it is dispersed in uh, uh, through sieve analysis, this sieve analysis. So mm -hmm. the percent of silt and clay obtained in water and dispersion medium and percent of silt and clay obtained aggregate analysis are measured and the ratio is called as clay dispersion index. Clay, dis clay dispersion ratio, sorry. And clay dispersion index is the percent of only clay dispersed in water and clay dispersed in aggregate analysis. And clay flocculation index is clay dispersed that is in aggregate analysis, sorry, this will be minus. Clay dispersed in aggregate analysis minus clay dispersed in water divided by clay dispersed in aggregate analysis. Now, structural coefficient, another ratio is structural coefficient. Structure, uh, structural coefficient is silt plus clay in aggregate analysis minus silt plus clay in water dispersion medium divided by silt plus clay in water medium. Hi, better the structural coefficient, better is the um, soil structural stability. Uh, similarly, if uh, uh, clay dispersion ratio is higher, it will be uh, poorer soil structure. Water, another method is that water drop method. What is done here? A soil mass is kept on a uh, is kept on a floor and water drops of specific diameter that is 4.7 millimeter it, it is very important for uh, exam purpose is allowed to fall from a height of 30 centimeter these are all fixed for methodology mm, then we count the number of drops that is required to completely disturb the soil aggregate mass and that number of drop is counted and higher the number of drops required higher is the soil structural stability in that way, the structural stability of soil is evaluated. Any question? Hello? Sir, in the chat box, there is no question. Students, you have any question, please ask to the sir. Sir,
हेलो सर हेलो हेलो सर प्रॉपरेशनमेंटेशनमेंटेशन is um, sieve is taken okay in sedimentation method sir no no in aggregate analysis in aggregate analysis we have taken 3 okay. to 4 sieves of different diameter ha uh, based this diameter yes yes sir okay sir this diameter that is, that in sedi- that is aggregate method yes yes sedimentation method sir in sedimentation method the it is uh, we have to take a 1000 ml beaker 1000 ml graduated cylinder okay, okay so 1000 ml uh, cylinder okay, then we uh, take a soil mass definite uh, pre weighted soil pre weighed soil mass that is 100 gram or 200 gram based on your requirement okay and sir. then <coughs> it is allowed to um, fall okay then uh, then settling it is uh, noted down how much uh, time it is taking from coming to top to down okay based in on cylinder th- while we are uh, that uh, in pouring the soil in the cylinder the time taken by the soil to settle in the bottom of the cylinder sir yes 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 okay sir and then uh, you can you will note down the time okay for sir. time, time uh, you know the formula v equals to h t that is velocity equals to h into t okay sir this Tra- travel uh, travel distance into time from okay, that sir. you can know uh, the mass of the soil using stokes law formula of stokes law okay sir okay sir and in that case you can determine the uh, struck amount of mass falling directly Uh, on the soil part uh, on the at the bottom reaching at okay. the bottom higher okay. the amount of mass uh, you get higher is the structural stability okay. sir rather than okay difference is between dry and wet sieving in dry sieving we air dry the soil and uh, and in this sieve no you can see there is a box around the sieve okay we do not put any water it is allowed to uh, it is shaken using a uh, motor and uh, the particles shakes uh, in dry condition the soil mass is shaken in dry condition whereas in wet sieving technique we put air dry soil on the top of the sieve and this um, Uh, box this outer box or outer uh, curtain is filled with water uh, up to the bottom of the top sieves and then it is shaken up and down up and down and the soil and the, you know, the soil get wetted and then uh, the mass uh, this, the sieves is taken out and um, mass of um, particle mass of the particles retained on each sieve is taken any other queries no for net and ers i will if, is there any net and ers candidate so many candidates are sir please sit down. okay for net and ers uh, uh, in aggregate formation i will tell that there are Uh, three theories are there for net and uh, this is uh, this always often asked in that is micro aggregate theory aggregate hierarchy model theory and particulate organic matter nucleus model theory uh, uh, this things they can note down sir please uh, repeat the uh, theories micro aggregate theory i can show you in details also if you wish
My slide is visible, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Micro aggregate for micro aggregate theory, it is hypothesized that uh, soil uh, first soil clay particle from micro aggregate and soil consists of micro aggregates and they bound together to form macro aggregates <laughs> by using clay polyvalent cation and organic matter like this I have mentioned here. Clay is being bound by with clay 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 using polyvalent cation and organic matter. Okay, like here it is organic matter RC double omega. And for aggregate hierarchy model, which I explained there also, aggregate hierarchy model is this. I told first soil particle which coagulate and foculate to form nano aggregate, then nano aggregate again cement to form mac, mac, micro aggregate, micro aggregate again cemented to form macro aggregate. <coughs> like this this is the stages of aggregation and uh, pom nucleus model the my aggregate hierarchy model is given by Tisdale and Oates in 1982 this is very frequently asked and uh, mm, this is the most accepted hypothesis for aggregate formation now pom nucleus model what is pom pom is particulate organic matter what is that you see uh, soil is composed of sand basically and sand particles despite being inert have a it can exhibit van der waals force through this van der waals force it is surrounded by some amount of organic matter around a soil sand particle okay this is called the particle the organic matter which is present in the periphery of a sand is called particulate organic matter. So if a sand particle is surrounded by organic matter, organic matter has functional group like C double O minus O, o hydroxyl, C double H and other many other chemical functions. So it becomes active in nature from inactive to active. And in that case, the active, the soil, uh, so it act as a clay particle and it will form uh, the periphery with by clay, clay bridging. Again, it will form clay bridging or cation bridging or other uh, coagulation mechanism to form soil mass, then microaggregate, then macroaggregate. In that way, you can see here a lot of uh, PUM is here, which are coagulated and it is forming microaggregate and macroaggregate are formed using the cementing agents. Okay, understood, I think. Uh, sir, uh, one more request is there. Uh, when you will provide us the material, study material, uh, can you please kindly mention uh, this theory for uh, NET and ARS? Uh, if you mention like that, then it will be easy for us to uh, study and uh, for the preparation also. Okay, no issues. I'll do. Okay, sir. Can you please explain POM theory again? Yes, I will show you. No issues. First, you have to understand that uh, sand particle is there in soil. Okay. Sand are inert in nature, but despite being inert in nature, all particle, all object present in earth exhibit van der Waal force like uh, a human also exhibit a book also exhibit every inert material exhibit van der Waal force also can exhibit <coughs> so the pom is uh, the sand particles are surrounded by organic matter uh, due to van der Waal's force and organic matter has high um, uh, the negative highly fun active functional group like carboxylic, hydroxyl, etc. Ketone, all these groups are present in organic matter. That makes the sand particle active. And this sand particle, the, it, the 
the total portion that is sand plus organic matter surrounding is is called particulate organic matter it act as a nucleus like atom and around around this nucleus the silt and clay particles are coagulated by cation bridging or other mechanism and then the cementation process takes place to form microaggregate then again the uh, the microaggregates forms uh, are binded together by root hyphae and organic matter to form macroaggregate okay understood this hello yes sir yes sir okay i hope sir any student have any question please ask uh, quickly because we end the session fastly Okay, if there is no class, Suman, you can end up this. Okay, sir. There is no question in chat box. Yes, sir. There is no question in chat box, sir. And uh, okay. no one uh, will ask on the sir uh, unmuting his mic. So, sir, sir, thank you very much, sir, for uh, for uh, informing uh, info uh, informative lecture to us. And uh, behalf of the all the student and behalf of the my department, soil science and agriculture chemistry of. Uh, PJ Rauri, uh, thankful to you, sir, for uh, uh, providing us the, your uh, precious time to us. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank uh, you very much, sir. Sekle, sir, also join, uh, sir, join, sir. Uh, no, they no. want to Thank say you. something, sir. Sekle, sir, please ask something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the corp director, the faculty. and the student i am very thankful to dr she has given very nice lecture as well as the first given very uh, nice presentation regarding all the textural class and all these things definitely that will be definitely helpful for the students for his preparation regarding the net or areas or grf and srf thank you thank you very much sir for giving and sparing your valuable time for the welfare of the student definitely your information will help them for all these Radio examinations and their thank you, sir, for kind of invitation you. and Allah providing me the opportunity. Also. Yes, sir, Chetan, what you want to ask? Please ask Chetana Jain. Yes, he has raised his hand. I think by mistake. मिस्टेक ही है